What a show we have in store for you to kick off 2017 and get back into the rugby groove. This week, we've made our way to Rugby Lions RFC, who have an all too familiar story of a club that have walked the tightrope of ambition and sustainability. Now, you can probably guess as to what's coming next, but before we get into it, and just to build a little bit of suspense, here are some key facts on the lines. Now, I hate to say it, but this is where so many clubs across the country will be able to relate to the Lions story. Back in the 2011-12 season, the Lions had to face the harsh reality of gambling, ambition versus sustainability. And sadly, due to financial difficulties, they were removed from National 2 South to the lowest possible level. I mean, how many stories have you heard of this happening to clubs near you? In my opinion, far too many. However, since those dark days, the Lions have managed to achieve free promotions, which mean they currently play their rugby in level seven, and they've had an outing to Twickenham, which just shows you how strong the foundations of this club are. And it's a real testament to everyone who is stuck by the club through thick and thin. Plus, they're currently bossing this league and looking to make it 12 wins from 12 when they take on Leamington this Saturday. Another promotion, it's on the cards. Anyway, let's head in, learn more about the Lions' recent history, and more importantly, find out what the future actually holds for this strong, resilient club. What, what does a normal week look like? Try and, try and nail it down for us. A normal week is probably be about 30 hours work here wow. um, because I, I help out and I yeah. probably clean, help to clean all the changing rooms and things like that, yeah. make sure all the kit's ready, probably wash the kit, um, look after all the stash for the boys and more importantly really the job in the week is to actually look after the players. Yeah. Um, you know, their well-being, making sure they're okay, chasing them, making sure they're coming to training, and working with um, the head coaches and people to make sure everything's running smoothly. Why do you do it? The love of rugby, really. Uh, I've been involved in rugby from a child, really, myself. Uh, first game I played was at about 12 years of age. I played something like 600 games um, throughout. So yeah, it sort of gets into your blood and I couldn't do without it. I couldn't, my Saturdays I, and Tuesdays and Thursdays and sometimes, well, seven days a week sometimes. Do you think you're ready for another step up, another promotion? I think so. Um, Look, we're taking every game, every game as it comes. Yeah. You know, first and foremost, it's Leamington here on Saturday, and then we've got another cup game, and we'll take it from there. But it's looking like, you know, I've got a good feeling about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think we will, and oh, it's good, good to be a part of it. To be honest, how's the prep been for Leamington? <sighs> well, Tuesday was a tough one. I mean, yeah. blew the cobwebs off. <laughs> uh, a few too many roast, roast potatoes, but um, and how, how falls of you know on Christmas dinner. But yeah, the boys they, they worked hard and. On, on Tuesday, fitness-wise. We're going to do a bit again tonight, I think. Um, I think they'll wait for me. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, look, we know exactly how, what limits are going are gonna, to are gonna put on us. Um, we had a good result at their place, and they're going to come here and want to beat us. Well, enjoy your fitness. Best of luck. Uh, thank you for your time. Thanks very much. Cheers, no Chris. problem. Appreciate it, mate. Toughest ground to play in the league. Awesome. Uh, here, our home fans are awful when, they, when we're playing poorly, they're right onto you. This one? Uh, probably here, with the home fans when they don't like us, they get on our case. If you could be one of your teammates, who would it be and why? Sam James, because he's so good looking. Demo. Sam James, because I'm the best. Definitely Dave Adelton, the coach, I like him. Biggest biceps? Come on. Well, we haven't got any, we're all fat old men. Ben Hathaway. Joe Higgins. Worst person to run with and why? Joe, because he doesn't stop talking. And Joe Higgins is just annoying. Demo, because it's just embarrassing. 
probably Rob Dignum because he's too slow and old. Welcome back to Webb Ellis Road, home of the Rugby Lions. It sounds surreal, doesn't it? Webb Ellis Road, rugby in rugby, the birthplace of the game. Anyway, I digress. For a club who were literally rock bottom three years ago, Thursday night was actually a pleasant surprise. And it reiterated to me that no matter what level you play at or what goes on within these clubs, the core values of the game and that rugby culture, it never ever leaves you. And I tell you what, for a team who were removed from level four to the lowest possible division, they were throwing the ball around without a care in the world on Thursday night. They were oozing confidence and they had this, this sort of swagger about them, which was actually a pleasure to watch. Now, I don't want to jinx anything for the Lions, but if they take Thursday night's training and run-throughs into this afternoon's fixtures, well, I think it could be a rather long afternoon for the Leamington. And on that note, let's head over and find out how the Lions match day prep's looking. Roll on kickoff. How's the club looking? Is it a stable rugby club? It's as stable as many or most, I guess. Yeah. Um, we, a club of our size, cannot operate at Midlands Five, Midlands Four. We have we have an infrastructure which gives us an overhead, which means that we need to generate revenues mm -hmm. that we can't we can't manage at that level. So we need to get to the sort of Midlands One type level before we can truly begin to generate the incomes which will make this club a viable business moving forward to allow it to wash its own face. You briefly touched on the ambitions there, but what, what are the ambitions, what are the plans for the club over the next few seasons on and off the pitch? Oh, OK. Um, off the pitch, off the pitch, it will purely be to generate sufficient revenues to put the best club on the park that we can and pay our bills. That's that's it. it. All the growth of the club from this point onwards will be organic. It will be within its own within its own cost model. So off the pitch, we will generate as much money as we can to put the best club we can, the club side we can, on the pitch to enable us to compete at whatever level we can take ourselves to. Um, I think in the past we've been overly ambitious in stating we want to be in Division X or Division Y. There's none of that folly any longer. Yeah. We, will, we will compete at whatever level we are able to compete at and pay our bills and to be able to sleep at night. What league that is, I wouldn't like to, I wouldn't like to say. Finally, I'm sure there's going to be a few clubs across the country that will be going through similar circumstances that, that you've been through. Can you spare any advice to those? Oh, no. Um, <laughs> I, I guess the only one would probably be to stick with it. Yep. If, you, if you stick with it and you have a belief and you have a business model um, and, and, and just don't be, uh, don't, don't be drawn away from the path that you know is right. Obviously, with the recent troubles and the history of the Lions, do you have to be cautious not to go too high or to add too much stress or pressure on the foundations of the club? Um, it's a funny one, really, because... Me, myself, I, I want to be the best we can and, and improve week in and week out, you know, and trying to install that into the players is good. I mean, what I'll do while I'm here, I'll just try to do the best I can f for the players, myself and the club, and, and just move it forward as much as, as po much as possible. Where is the best that you can be? What level do you think that is? Who knows, really? I mean, you know, we, we're not taking anything for granted. We're the top of the league at the moment. Uh, there's a lot of good sides in there. Leamington's a good side. They're a proud club. They've been a, around the watch rare for a very long time. You know, so they're going to be a hard task for us today. Come on, squeeze on me. Ready? One, two, three, two. Let's go! Come on, boys! 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 Come on,
What level do you want to see the Lions playing? I think it'd be nice to see us playing in the national leagues again. So that's why I'd be happy with that. <laughs> What does this club mean to you? Like my son that you've just seen, my dad brought me up here first in 1948 and I've been coming up here ever since. It means everything to me. Craig, briefly tell us about the season so far for yourselves. Uh, yeah, it's been going well. Uh, obviously, a tough battle today, but I think for the most half of the season we've been doing uh, we've been doing all right. Obviously, disappointing, but uh, I think it's on the up this half. What went wrong today? To be honest, I think we had a, a ten-minute spell towards the end of the first half. Uh, two quick tries. Apart from that, it's a tough battle. Take those away. There's only two points in the game. Ambitions. What do you want from the season? Uh, realistically, we're a team on the up. I think top four needs to be for us, and I think we uh, we can achieve that, especially if we perform like we did today. Brilliant. Well played, Rob. Um, a win's a win. How pleased were you with that performance, though? Yeah, with all due respect to Craig and his boys, it was it was an ugly win. Uh, we'll take the win, obviously, but uh, lots to work on. I think lots of coaches will be saying the same thing. First game in the new year, it was, uh, wasn't pretty, but it was a win. What do you think you need to be working on this week at training? We say the same thing every week about keeping the penalty count down, and it must have been in the 20s. We sort of piggyback sides and just let them back into the game. As Craig said, you know, you know, it was, it was close, but we, we kept it close for that reason. Now, I've asked... A few people around the club, ambitions, where do you want to be? Where do you want to see the boys? What level do you want to be playing at? It's like we spoke about in the week. Everybody's gauge of success is where your first team's at. We're a new club. We've only been doing it for three or four years. So we just look at a look at a first, a second, a third team. Ideally, the first team keep going up. It, it's, a, it's a big operation with the other sides as well. So potentially one, maybe two leagues higher is the honest answer, but not much more than that. Brilliant, guys. Appreciate your time. Best of luck for the rest of the Thanks, season. Thank Cheers. you very much, Craig. Thank you, awesome. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Thanks, guys. That's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the show. A massive thank you to everyone here at Rugby Lions for allowing us to showcase their rugby club. I have to say, it's been an absolute pleasure to have worked so closely with the Lions in the build-up to their fixture against Leamington. It's, it's such a, a sad story, but an inspiring one at the same time. And if you haven't already heard of the Lions, I'm sure you'll be seeing and hearing much more of them as they follow their ambitions and plans to reclimb the leagues once again. Next week, we're off to the North East to showcase Hartlepool as they'll be taking on Gateshead. If you haven't already, jump onto our YouTube channel at RugbyNatsUK and subscribe to us. Until next time.